Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon sa mga nakikinig at nanonood dyan. Ito po ang inyong teacher, Alfonso C. Corpus. I'll be talking about our topic for today. And that would be electric flux and Gauss law. This is for general physics 2, third quarter, senior high school specialization subject. Now, what you should be able to do after viewing this video? You need to have at least two objectives to be taken. One, calculate the electric flux through a surface given the electric field. Number two, state Gauss law mathematically and verbally. And of course, naka-red lang siya kasi hindi pa siya ngayon. Use Gauss law to infer the electric field due to uniformly distributed charges on long wires, spheres, and large plates. Be still like a mountain and flow like a great river. So, let's begin. So, we start with the concept of electric flux. And it is defined as uh, the electric flux phi through, all, through any closed surface is proportionate to the sum of charges enclosed by such surface. So, kung papakigyan mo parang, ano ba to? The electric flux down through a closed surface is proportionate to the total sum of charges enclosed by such a, a surface. Una, ano ba ibig sabihin ng electric flux? So, the word flux also means flow, originally from Latin. And it starts with the concept of, let's say, you have a hole. And then there's an amount of water or anything flowing out of that. So, imagine nyo lang butas na may lumalabas na maraming tubig. Evenly outward. Okay. If you are to experience such amount of force of water getting out of a hole, for example, mananotice mo na whenever you feel the force or the power of the water flowing out, it feels stronger kapag malapit ka dun sa hole. And as you go outward around the hole, the force of water pulling out or pushing out feels less. And that's because of the concept of the density of flow. So, the closer the, to the origin of water, the stronger will its density be. And if you can imagine, for example, you place yourself near the hole, you will feel the force of that stronger than when you place yourself away from it. So, yun ang concept nun. So, this time, pero instead of water, we have charges. And then, naka-enclose siya sa any type of shape. Then, what is considered na lumalabas dyan would be the electric field. And since electric field yan, that would be measured out, outward from the sources, which is the charges. And then, dadaan siya dun sa surface na nag enclose sa kanya. Now, ito yung mathematical definition niya. So, th this means that you have a, a closed integral of a vector E and that with the DA. The DA refers to the infinitesimal area na lumalabas dun ang electric field. And that product is basically the electric flux. In short, it's just a uh, to simplify, it's just a sum of charges passing through within that enclosed area. And since mathematical definition yan, let's say, baguhin natin in such a way na medyo mas common siya use sa uh, real thing, those physical situation. Say, for example, you have several charges na naka-enclose. Pero this time, ang naka na area mo, medyo symmetrical. So, let's say, circle siya, no? So, symmetrical siya. And, in the same way sa concept ng flux, na, in this, the charges then represent as the parang yung hole. And then, what's emanating out of them would be the electric field. So, the density of those electric field depends upon how far away from the origin, or sa hole area. In this case, yung mga charges. So, you have to choose a symmetric arrangement in such a way na ang lumalabas na electric field or vectors out of that area would be perpendicular dun sa area na yun. To make it simpler, para hindi ka na magsasolve ng mga other angles besides 
90 degrees. So if you want to see that, the formula for that one would have to be simplified. Lalabas mo lang yung E to make it appear na yung value ng electric field getting out of that area is the same all around. Okay, and then uh, to put simply, it's just the dot product of the electric field and the area. Now, this area refers to the surface area na nag enclosed. So, hindi siya circle like this, no? It's more of a sphere. Sphere siya. Okay? Okay, that would be our formula. Now, that formula is basically the formula for the flux. And, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange them in such a way that we will be obtaining kuha tayo ng electric field E. And ito na ngayon. So, rearrange siya and notice that it is now the ratio of the total charges divided by an area. The area is the surface area of the enclosing uh, volume around which you can find the charges. If you can see these charges outside, they are not included literally. Whenever you have a charge outside, they are literally outside of the volume. So therefore, they are not included sa nagko-contribute ng electric field except anything that is only enclosed dun sa area na yun. Say for example, you have one charge, one microcoulomb, and it's about a meter apart from another charge maybe in this case and let's see whether meron equivalence ang um, Coulomb's law where we derive the electric field formula and Gauss law <clears throat> ito yung sa Coulomb's law and ito naman yung malalabas natin sa Gauss law yung electric field we call that formula the Gauss law in this case notice that they refer to the same thing, but hindi sila pareho ng appearance, except maybe ito yung dalawa. If we express that further, we can rearrange that here, no? So, pinagsama mo lang yung dalawa, separate mo from this constant. And this one naman, nagkaroon ng 4 pi r squared. Now, bakit may 4 pi r squared? Kasi, you're going to enclose that charge by a sphere evenly around it. So, we can get the field around the surface of that sphere. And happens to be that the area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. And so when we substitute that and rearrange, you come up with this formula. Notice that they are now the same, except that ito at saka yan ang di pareho. All you have to do is just equate the two to come up with the same equation. So this now actually means this, or in this case represented by this expression. If you are going to solve this one, Gauss law and electric field based on Coulomb's law equivalent, well, the answer is yes. So, formula-wise, they are equivalent. At least for a point charge na pinakita ko dito. So, let's substitute naman the value given sa binigay kanina. No? Okay. Uh, the values are just simple. No? So, substitute mo yung 1 microcoulomb sa so 1 meter squared. And this is the formula K sub E. So, ang lumalabas na value, ito pala. Kung gagawin mo naman sa Gauss law, ganun din, 1 times 10 negative 6, 1 microcoulomb, yung surface area ng sphere di pa nilagay. Ito yung, yung value ng epsilon. Now, this is supposed to be 10 to the negative 12. And just like that. So, substitute na natin yung A with 4 pi r squared. And you come up with the same value. 9 times 10 to the 3 newton per coulomb. So, in this case, they equivalent. Of course, the answer is still yes. Now, let's make another set up of charges. This is the long negative, isang positive. A triangle side, just like the setup that we've done last time. So, triangular, equilateral triangle arrangement. But this time, they're within the bounds of a sphere whose radius is 1 meter. So, the question is, ano yung expression ng electric field using both Coulomb's law at yung Gauss law? And, let's first look sa Coulomb's law. So, derivation ng Coulomb's law. Notice that this is a 
mathematical formula. Now, ano yung ibig sabihin nito? Okay. So, notice that pag sinob mo yan, gagamit ka pa ng vectors. Tatlo na vectors yan. And naalamin mo lahat ang magnitude and directions ng bawat isa. Now, ito yung solution niya. Okay, mahaba, no? So, 1, 2, 3 charges. So, ang lumalabas na values in the zero man ng x components is just the y component. Okay, with a Fahrenheit value of negative 11.6 times 10 to the 3 newton per coulomb using the electric field from Coulomb's law. Now, let's use Gauss law naman. Notice that ang Gauss law formula is Similar, except that yung summation nandito sa taas lang, wala dito. This one only refers kasi uh, the area enclosed by this volume, the sphere. So, we substitute yung value ng surface area ng sphere. Now, bakit negative 1 times and negative 6 siya? Kasi nga, sum ng charges. Now, there are 3 charges, isang positive, dalawang negative. So, 1 positive, minus 2 will give you 1 lang, negative 1 in this case. So, we come up with this value and then substituting all of them, ang ending value is negative 9 times 10 to the 3 newton per coulomb as opposed to the coulomb's law of negative 11.6 times 10 to the 3. They are not very different, although it looks like para on difference na 2 lang, no? 2.6 lang. But remember, this is 10 to the 3. So, in this case, are they now equivalent? Eh, not really. Now, kasi nga, ang system is that we have three charges here. They are a little widely separated. Siguro kung medyo dikit-dikit sila sa center, in such a way that they are almost acting as if one charge sila, they will still come up with the same answer. But in this case, Hindi, kasi when you apply the strictly the electric field based on Coulomb's law, vector based siya. So, medyo kada point niyan, iba ang value. Sa Gauss law, they are all assumed to be the same. So, in a way, parang ina-average niya lang ang value na nakukuha ng Coulomb's law individually around it. Which makes the solution easier. Let's have another one. This time, gawin natin 4 charges. Tatlong negative, isang positive. Now remember, ang sum ng tatlong negative at isang positive is negative 2. So let's try. Okay, so notice that kung gagamitin mo naman yung Coulomb's law formula, apat naman na ngayon ang gagawin mong distance. So isa dyan, isa dyan, isa dyan, isa dyan. So medyo complicated na siya. So I will not be showing the solution. Now if you are challenged to show the solution, you may send me your solution for this one. But the Gauss law solution is just this one. This time, apat lang ang charges is a sum up mo. Ganun pa rin ang surface area ganina. And, ang answer mo is just twice of the original value that you got. So, negative 18 times 10 to the 3. So, that means, if you have equal number of positive and negative charge, your total electric field, no matter how many charges you have, basta equal ng positive and negative, is zero. However, kung gagamitan mo ng Coulomb's law, hindi yun necessarily zero. Okay, so in summary, Gauss law using electric plus is another approach to solving problems sa electric field. Remember, complicated ang pag-solve ng electric field, so you have to use a lot of higher mathematics such as calculus, which we'll be dealing with next time. It provides simpler solution to complex vector solutions and is more direct but the answers are not entirely the same as in the usual vector solution. Which one is more correct? If you were to ask me, I would say the vector solution. However, given the very, if you apply strictly the Gauss law in such a way na very symmetrical ang formulation, they will tend to have the same answer. next video, we're going to determine the electric field of a straight wire, the charge, a charged sphere, and a charged flat plane. Okay, see you again. This is your Pinoy Physics teacher at your service.